today we're going to talk about the parathyroid gland this is a part one where we'll discuss about the anatomy uh, including blood supply of parathyroid glands so this is the location you can see the esophagus with the pharynx so pharynx esophagus there you have the epiglottis and then in front you have the hyoid bone with the thyroid membrane and the thyroid cartilage the thyroid gland in front and the posterior aspect of both the lateral lobes of the thyroid gland can be seen and you can see that the parathyroid gland superior and inferior are on the thyroid gland posteriorly you can see four glands over here one two three and four So parathyroid glands are endocrine glands situated behind the thyroid gland. They are four in number usually, but they can go up to nine in number. They are oval or lentiform in shape, and size is approximately six into four into two mm. Each gland weighs about forty to fifty milligram and is usually brownish and firm. So once again, the anterior view you can see the thyroid gland. Which is encircling the trachea and the thyroid cartilage above it. This is the cricoid cartilage. Then straight posterior view, you can see the four glands on the back of the thyroid gland. And here we have removed the esophagus and the pharynx, so you can directly see the trachea with the epiglottis and the thyroid cartilage there. It's a cricoid cartilage. So regarding the embryology, there are the two superior parathyroid glands develop from the fourth pharyngeal pouch, and they are constant in position. The two inferior parathyroid glands develop from the endoderm of the third pharyngeal pouch, and they are generally variable in position. So this is the embryology picture. You can see the midline thyroglossal duct, which later forms the lateral lo both lobes of the thyroid gland. Here you have the pharyngeal arches. And these are the pouches, one, two, three, four, and five. So here, third pharyngeal pouch forms the superior, inferior parathyroid glands, and the fourth pharyngeal pouch forms the superior parathyroid glands. So one on either side. So here, one point to note is that from the third pharyngeal pouch. The other end uh, gives rise to the formation of the thymus. So the location, the superior parathyroid gland is located at the middle of the posterior border of the thyroid lobes, within the capsule of the thyroid gland. The inferior parathyroid gland is variable in position, but some of the common positions are within the thyroid capsule, behind the inferior thyroid artery, and near to the lower pole of the thyroid lobes. Second option is that it can be behind and outside the thyroid capsule, and above the th inferior thyroid artery. And third is it can be within the thyroid lobe. It's a simple diagram showing the four parathyroid glands on the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland. Now there are many sites where uh, other sites where these glands can be seen because of their descent during embryology. They can be seen. In any site along their path of descent, so uh, ectopic superior parathyroids have been seen in the tracheoesophageal groove, retroesophageal area, and the posterior mediastinum. Now, ectopic inferior parathyroids. Some of the co other common locations include within the thymus, anterior mediastinum, within the thyroid, and within the thyrothymic ligament. There are still some other locations which are also ectopic. So the blood supply of the parathyroid glands, the arterial supply is via the inferior thyroid artery, and the anastomatic branch of the superior thyroid artery with the inferior thyroid artery. The venous supply is via the three thyroid veins: superior, inferior, and middle thyroid veins. The lymphatic drainage is to the deep cervical nodes and the paratracheal nodes. So once again, you can see the pharynx, cricopharyngeus muscle. That is the this is the inferior constrictor muscle, and this is the esophagus. You can see the posterior aspect. You can see the inferior thyroid artery coming from here, giving branch to the 
parathyroid and this here is the anastomatic branch with the superior, parath superior thyroid artery and from that anastomatic branch there is a branch to the parathyroid. So since seeing from the posterior aspect this is the left side and this is the right side. So in the left, the left subclavian and the left common carotid are separate while on the right side they form from the right brachiocephalic trunk dividing into the right common carotid and the right subclavian. So another easy to draw simple diagram you have the esophagus up to the pharynx and here you have the posterior aspect both the thyroid lobes with the four parathyroid glands you can see the inferior thyroid artery giving branch to that the anastomatic branch here there should be a connection to show the anastomatic branch of with the superior thyroid and from there another branch now regarding the physiology the parathyroid gland has two types of cells chief cells and oxyphil cells now, chief cells are the ones which secrete parathormone or parathyroid hormone which controls the calcium metabolism. Oxyphil cells are poorly understood and have no obviously understood function. You can see the chief cells and the oxyphil cells. Oxyphil cells are slightly larger compared to the chief cells. Now the parathyroid hormone or the parathormone. It has 84 amino acids and is secreted by the chief cells and has a half-life of 4 minutes. Parathyroid hormone promotes calcium reabsorption so and converts vitamin D to 1,2-dihydroxycholecalciferol in the kidney. It increases the absorption of calcium and phosphorus from the gut and it stimulates osteoclasts and mobilizes calcium from the bone. So parathyroid hormone increases the calcium level either by promoting the calcium reabsorption through the kidneys or increasing the absorption of calcium through the gut or stimulating the osteoclast to release calcium from the bone. So diagram depicting the same thing, the effect of parathyroid hormone on the bone, kidney and the GIT. So normal parathyroid hormone value is 10 to 65 picogram per ml. Now a few words about calcium. So total calcium in plasma is both ionized and non-ionized. 45% is ionized and 55% is non-ionized. So the serum calcium is a normal value is 8.5 to 10.2 milligram per deciliter. Some suggest a, uh, 9 to 11 as the normal range. The In millimoles it is 2.2 to 2.5 millimoles per liter. So the level of calcium is controlled by three uh, substances. One is parathyroid hormone, one is calcitonin, which is secreted by the parafollicular C cells, and the third is vitamin D. So some of the causes for hypercalcemia. So we have endocrine causes like primary hyperparathyroidism, tertiary hyperparathyroidism, thyrotoxicosis, pheochromocytosis, and adrenal crisis. Then vitamin D related pathologies like milk alkali syndrome, vitamin D intoxication, certain granular mentis diseases like sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. Then we have a familial condition known as familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. Renal failure both acute and chronic can result in hypercalcemia. Immobilization can also result in hypercalcemia. Certain malignancies like metastasis to the bones, multiple myeloma, Parathyroid hormone related peptide mediated cancers like breast cancer, lung cancer. They release this uh, hormone with this substance which is known as parathyroid hormone related peptide. And that can also result in hypercalcemia. Drugs like thiazides, lithium and vitamin A can also cause hypercalcemia. So this is briefly about the parathyroid gland, the parathyroid hormone and about its effect on calcium and a few words about hypercalcemia. Thank you.